Good morning. My favourite business quote is from the publisher Felix Dennis and it goes something like this. There's a lot of money in the hills. All you need to do is go and dig it up. And I see a lot of WooCommerce websites where you are leaving money in the hills. So here are five easy and quick hacks that will help you squeeze more money from your e-commerce websites. As ever, chapter markers are below. Let's get straight into hack number one. Hack number one is a big, big opportunity, especially if you're using content to drive traffic to your website. And the hack is to upsell your products throughout your site. I've split this hack into five little sub hacks, ranging from the very simple requiring no plugins to the more powerful requiring plugins. So we're gonna start at the simple end. If you have a blog on your website, then there's an easy way that you can actually embed WooCommerce products into each blog post. Let me show you how simple this is. All you have to do is visit the product you want to embed, copy the URL along the top here. So I'm just gonna copy that. Go to the post where you want to embed it and you literally paste that product in. And what's nice about this, it brings in the product information dynamically. So it brings in the product title, the image. It also has a little buy now button and a read more. If you want to make that product pop out a bit more on that post page, then there's a simple way to do it. What we're gonna do is we're gonna turn it into a group block and apply a background color to it. So I'm gonna select the block itself. Then over here, I can click on the list view and click group, or I can click this little, little icon up here and click group. That'll basically put that embed, that product into a group. Now over on the right here, I can actually change the background color or add a background gradient. Let me just add a background color. I can also add a bit of extra padding to it down here as well. It just makes it pop a bit more. If you want a slightly nicer looking layout for your product that you insert into your post, there's a way to do it using the free WooCommerce blocks. This comes with WooCommerce now. It's a whole bunch of blocks that they provide you. They're down here and you've got different layouts. I'm actually just gonna show you probably the nicest one for this, for what we want to achieve here, which is the featured product blog block, which is this one here. You basically bring it in here and then you choose one of your products and it creates this nice layout for you like so. So it brings in the product title, but it uses the background image automatically and it has a nice shop now button here as well. If you want an even more fancy layout to showcase your products, then you could use the flip book block from our storefront blocks, library of blocks. Uh, it's very simple to use. You just drag it into your post and it's going to bring in your products in this lovely flip book. You can choose which products to show over here on the right. So you can select which products you want to show um, just from this little drop down here and you can change the order of them as well. It's really up to you which ones you show. Pick a few here and see how this works. You can also filter these by category as well. There we go. Let me just update this and let's go and look at it. And then that just appears within the post and your, your users can then just scroll through them like that. But it's got this beautiful little book effect going on. If you want to automate the entire process so you don't have to manually insert these products in every post, you can use a plugin like our Block Injector plugin to dynamically insert these in all your posts or the posts that you choose. Let me just quickly show you how it works. I'm going to go add new. So I'm going to create a new layout using Block Injector and then I'm going to tell that layout to appear in all my posts. And I'm going to put in this instance the flip book block inside my layout. So I'm just going to add the flip book block here. I'm not going to select um, which products to show in it. I'm just going to be uh, default ones. But the important bit is in Block Injector here, I can say, right, I want to show this on all my posts and then I can actually set the position within those posts. So I'm going to say, right, I want it to show after three blocks. And now that flip book will show in all my posts, regardless of how many posts I've got. So if I have a thousand posts, it's going to show in a thousand posts. Here's my post that I've got. Let's check this one out. This is stock just in. See how that dynamically is in that post. It's not actually in the post itself. It's dynamically being injected into it. So when I go into the post, you see it's not there. Pretty whizzy, eh? If I go to another post, you'll see it's also in that post as well. But as I said, I could have targeted that by category as well if I wanted to. The fifth sub hack is the most powerful one and the cleverest. What happens is when somebody's viewing the products on your store, we're making a note of which products they're looking at. So I'm just clicking on a few products here as if I'm browsing this. And what happens is when they go and visit one of the posts, we're basically redisplaying those products back to them in the context of that post. And not just that post, any post that we decide to show it on. So in this instance, I set this to show on every single post. So if I go to any of these posts now, you see how we're redisplaying the products we've actually gone to look at. If we go and look at some more products, let's look at this um, this brown shoe down here and then go back to any post, we'll display that brown shoe. So this is fantastically powerful because you're redisplaying the products that they're interested in in the context of your website. So they're more likely to purchase it and click on it and buy it from you. Let me just quickly show you how we set this up. We use two plugins for this actually. We use Block Injector to dynamically inject a block into a location, in this case, all posts after 
two blocks and then we're using our storefront blocks plugin to bring in recently viewed products so if I go to the block here you can see all we've done is select our recently viewed option down here the other beauty about this is we can choose any layout so we can have the flip bringing in the recently viewed products or a nice masonry right the second major hack is to create landing pages now I put here for your most popular products but actually you could also do this for the products that aren't selling as well as you think they might be because the more control you have over the layout of these key product pages the more conversions you should have that's the idea now again there are two ways to do this a slightly hacky way uh, a manual way which I'm going to show you first and then a second way using our Woo Builder Blocks plugin. So this is the product that we think we could sell more of. It's a white top. It's doing all right but it's not really selling that great. So what we want to do is actually change the layout of this page and I'm going to start with a slightly hacky way. There are just four steps to do this. I'm probably going to do a blog post about this and I'll put these steps in that blog post and I'll, if I do do that I'll put a link in the description below. But essentially we're going to create a new page and we're going to design the layout we like. Now the beauty of doing it this way, we've got no constraints in terms of we're not constrained by WooCommerce how the layout looks. Then we're going to create an add to cart button. I'm going to show you how to do that. Then we're going to redirect to the cart page after successful, successful addition. So when we click on add to cart, we want to take them straight to the cart page. Then we are going to set up a redirect from the product page to our new landing page. Let me show you how we're going to do it. Okay, so step one, we're going to create a new page. So all I'm going to do is go add new and let's build this new page. Now the beauty of this, as I said, that we can lay this out however we like. So I'm just going to call it white top. Now I'm not going to spend any time at all today on actually designing this page because I just want to show you the key steps really, which is creating the add to cart button and setting up the redirect. So let me just add the white top into this page. Now I'm adding this into a cover block. Let's put the title in here as well. See how fast I can work here. There we go. And obviously I'm much bigger. Let's change the color of it. And what I'm going to do under here is I'm going to actually add a button block. Now this is the key bit that you need to get working. We need to um, add the add to cart text here but getting the link is absolutely vital. I mean the other advantage of doing it this way actually is you can design this button block as well just using the block editor so you can have different styles to it if you want and you can obviously use your text size as well so you can make it a really big button. Now I could put a short description in here if I wanted to but we're manually putting in the, all this information so it's not tied at all to the actual product itself. So there are some definite disadvantages of doing it this way but it kind of looks kind of cool and you could put more information down it but the key bit as I said is the add to cart block so what we need to do is grab the add to cart URL for that button to make that actually when somebody clicks on that it creates it adds them to the cart so this is where we come back to this now I'm going to put this in the, a link into the description below but this is the convention you need you need to put your domain name in so in my website it's actually 18tags.com then you need to get this ID here. That is actually the product ID. And let me just show you how you get that ID. There's a few ways to get it, but probably the most simple way is to go to your products, find the product you want to add. In my case, it's a white top. And each product has a special ID that WooCommerce creates for you. Can you see, here we go. There's, that's the ID here. Let's make this bigger so you can see it. That's the ID on that particular top. It's 194. So what I would do, I would jump back in here and I would just replace this with 194 and that basically just says that's the product quantity equals one is how many I want to add when I click add to cart and now what we have to do is go back to our page and link that link here to my add to cart button so this is just add link put in that link I've created add that link in and now when we go and visit that product now now again I haven't done any designing on this but it already looks pretty cool that add to cart button when I click on that is actually going to add that product there it is I've got a different image here because I've just used a different image. It's going to add that white top directly into my cart. If you are using this method, then there's two other things I'd probably recommend that you set. The first is within WooCommerce. So in WooCommerce, you can actually set WooCommerce to automatically add to the cart and redirect to the cart page. And it's just this option down here. If you go to settings and then products, you will see an option here that says redirect to the cart page after successful addition. That means they'll get taken straight to the cart page after they click that add to cart button. Otherwise, it'll probably redirect them to the original product page. So you want to turn that on. The other thing that you probably want to do is set up a redirect from the old product to your new product landing page. And there is a free plugin that you can use. And I'll put a link in the description below to do that as well. Basically, you just put in the old the old product page URL saying this now goes to new landing page URL. There are some downsides to the method that I just showed you, namely things like SEO 
and it's a little bit hacky. If you want a cleaner approach, then you could use a plugin like our Woo Builder Blocks plugin. I'm not gonna give you a full demo of it, but I'll put links in the description below. But essentially what it does, it lets you turn any product into a Gutenberg-based product, and you'll see here I can start from scratch. And we've built a whole bunch of blocks that let you reconstruct the WooCommerce product page using Gutenberg. And here they are. You'll see if I click on the Block Inserter panel over here and scroll down, we've got a panel here that says Woo Builder Blocks. And all the blocks are here. So you've got things like product title and short description and add to cart. You've also got product tabs, product images, product galleries, everything you can think of. But you can design any layout you like because you're now freed up from the WooCommerce template. Here's a few examples of some of the designs that I put together just using Woo Builder Blocks. As I said, I'm not going to go into a long demo today because I've got done previous videos about that. But that's a cleaner, a cleaner approach and all your SEO will be maintained. And also Google will understand that product is still a product because the schema is still. The next hack is a simple hack that will reduce the amount of people that leave your website when they're on the shopping cart or checkout page. First, a few shocking stats for you. These are industry averages, but about 70% of your customers will abandon your website on your shopping cart or checkout page. The second stat is almost more shocking somehow. Those 26% of those customers that leave your site will then go on to buy from a competitor web website. So everything we can do to reduce that friction on the cart and checkout page is gonna benefit you financially. And there is one really simple hack that you can do on your sites, which I'm gonna show you now. So this hack is all about removing any distractions from your users when they're right on the cart and checkout pages. So these are both individual pages. Now this will depend on your theme on how you can do this, but most themes now let you turn off the header and the footer, but I'm amazed on how many websites or WooCommerce websites I go to where this hasn't been done. So what we've really, what I'd advise you to do is turn off the header and the footer for these key pages. Now I'm using Astra, but it's pretty much the same in Bloxy and it's pretty much the same in Cadence. You can also do this in Storefront using our Storefront Pro plugin and you can also do this in full site editing. So there is always a way to do this. If you do get stuck, stick them in the comments below. But with Astra, you just come into the Astra options here and you'll see there's an option up here to do disable above header and also display uh, footer and also disable primary header. And you do that for both the cart and checkout page. Let's have a look at what happens now on the cart page. So we're just left with the shopping cart. We don't have any of this other distraction where people might click off or they might see something down here that they're interested in. We just want them to focus on carrying on with the purchase. This next hack is all about improving your main shop page. Now this may not be quite possible for you yet if you're using a traditional theme, but I wanted to show you this because it gives you a glimpse of what's gonna be possible very soon for you if you're using WooCommerce. Here's a customized shop page that I've customized. You will be able to do this in the future just using full site editing. Let me show you how I've done this because now in WooCommerce, if you are using a full site editing theme, there is actually a shop page. It's not called shop page though, so it's a little bit confusing. So this is why I wanted to show you this. It's actually called the product archive page, but that fundamentally is your shop page. And the beauty of this is you can now lay this out how, however you like. So you could have left this alone. It would show the normal WooCommerce grid, but now you can use any blocks that you like to design this page. So you could use the free WooCommerce blocks if you wanted to. I've actually used some of our storefront blocks in here to make this a bit more snazzy. So I've used the masonry um, category grid block and I've also used a masonry product grid block which is bringing in products by category men and then I've just created two fairly basic departments a men's department and a woman's department down here and it looks really stunning when you when you go and look at it let's go and have a look at the actual shop page and of course the better your shop page the more products you're going to sell and it'll let you stand out from your competitive so here's the shop page on this site looks really, really beautiful. And the final hack today actually came from one of my subscribers on YouTube. I think it's genius actually. So they have the issue that they have a customer where their products are ranking really well in Google, but they're out of stock. So when customers land on that product, they just leave the page and go away. So they had the idea, could they actually display a sign up box on that product page itself right at the top, maybe where the short description is, that says something like, join our email list and we'll let you know when this product is back in stock. So let's see how we do that. So you could probably find a way to code this for free without any plugins, but it was getting a little bit tricky when I was trying to work out a tutorial for you. So by far the easiest way is just to use two plugins. We're gonna use a forms plugin to actually have the form, and then we're gonna use our block injector plugin to inject that form dynamically into all products that are out of stock. I've actually already created one for speed here. So in block injector, 
I've actually created the form using WP forms, but you could use gravity forms, you could use ninja forms, any forms will do here. And I've just created a very simple form where all we're asking for is the email. And in block injector, I've added that form and a bit of text. The other cool thing that I've done here is added this little bit of short code. So with block injector, we've added some dynamic content that you can bring into your layouts now that will dynamically pull information into that space. So in, in this case, because we're gonna show this in a product, it's gonna bring in the product title as a prefix before we actually have the sentence uh, and then we're gonna have the form. Now the key bit in block injector, we've said, right, we only wanna target all the products that are out of stock and we're actually gonna replace the product short description. We could have this appear above the product short description or below the short description or anywhere in that product page actually. I just think it's kind of cool to have it above the short description. And that's gonna pull that form in just for the products that are out of stock. So let's go and check out a few products on our store that we can see whether this is actually working. So let's choose the out of stock product here, this anchor bracelet, and in here we'll see the block has been dynamically injected with our words. And can you see how it's dynamically brought in the product title at the start of that sentence and there's our WP form. But it's not gonna show, that that box will not show on any products that aren't out of stock. So let's go and look at one of those. See this one here, it doesn't show. So it's only targeting the products that are out of stock. So I think it's a fantastic way that you can utilize products that have good ranking are driving traffic to your sites, but you don't want to lose them as customers. So I really, really hope you found those hacks useful. If you have your own hacks that you think I should include in a video, let me know in the comments below. If you found this video helpful, if you can hit that like button now, it would be amazing because it really, really, really helps spread the word of the channel. And also every time you do hit that like button, our cats get a little treat. <coughs>